Let's talk about functional groups in organic chemistry. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How can you classify organic compounds based on their parts? When we talk about classifying parts, we're talking about functional groups. Here are some examples of functional groups down here. These are just arrangements of atoms, specific arrangements of atoms that are found in organic molecules, and they help classify molecules and they react predictably. Now notice here we've outlined the functional groups in these dotted lines, and we're going to name them in just a minute. But one important thing to note is the little R that you're going to see in all these functional groups. R just means the rest of the molecule. They're the part we're kind of ignoring because we're focusing just on the functional group. But R generally consists of a carbon-containing chain, and multiple functional groups may be attached to that carbon-containing chain. Okay, let's take a look at our first group of functional groups. This, these are all carbonyl compounds. Notice that all of them have a similar carbon-oxygen double bond. Our first one here is carboxylic acid. So notice here's the rest of the molecule that could be happening over here. But on one part of that molecule, there might be carboxylic acid or a carbon-oxygen double bond attached to a hydroxide group. Carboxylic acids are typically found in foods like vinegar, apples, and milk. Here's ester. Ester is very similar to carboxylic acid, only instead of a hydroxide group, ester just kind of ends with an oxygen and then may go on to a second rest of the molecule, a second carbon-containing chain. Esters are found in fats and oils, such as essential oils per and perfumes, and due to their many pleasant smells. Aldehyde, right here, is similar to carboxylic acids and esters, only this time it ends in a hydrogen. Aldehydes are sweet-smelling compounds found in plants. You probably are familiar with these sweet smells in rose or citronella. They're used in perfume for those reasons, or cologne and some laundry detergents. The last is a ketone. A ketone doesn't have things, doesn't end in a hydroxide, oxygen, or hydrogen. Ketones go on just to the rest of the molecule. Ketones are found in sugar and steroids and in the solvent acetone or fingernail polish remover. The next set of functional groups we're going to see are alcohols, amines, and ethers. Alcohols are in many of the alcohols you're used to, such as rubbing alcohol or methanol and ethanol. In fact, rubbing alcohol like methanol and ethanol end in the end in OL. Rubbing alcohol is also named isopropanol. Amines are found in natural or synthetic dyes. They're found in polymers, vitamins, and medications such as penicillin. They're extremely essential to life. They're found in amino acids, hormones, and even DNA. So you see this little nitrogen with the hydrogen attached to it. Ethers are useful solvents for fats, oils, waxes, and other hydrocarbons. They're really prevalent in biochemistry. In fact, ether was a special chemical used down in the 1800s as an anesthetic. Typically, ether is called ethyl ether as the anesthetic was used. Ether is just an oxygen that's attached to two R groups, or the rest of the molecules. Another set of functional groups are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. These are focusing on the carbon chains themselves. If the carbon chain is made of all single bond, bonded carbon atoms, then we call that an alkane. If there's at least one double bonded carbon atom, we call them alkenes. And if there's at least one triple bonded carbon atom, we call them alkynes. Alkanes are found in natural gas and petroleum. Alkenes are the raw materials for all the familiar plastics, such as polyethylene, PVC, polypropylene, or polystyrene. You're probably more familiar with that last one as styrofoam. Alkynes are in pharmaceuticals, drugs, even poisonous frogs. Uh, if you use, ever used acetylene gas, alkynes are found in that as well. The last functional group we're going to focus on are phenyl benzyl, and benzene, and these are just a series of aromatic rings. Phenyl is found in many natural man-made chemicals, such as sanitation and odor-limiting products, perfumes, medication, dyes, plastics, and even food flavoring. Benzene is found naturally in volcanoes and forest fires, and it's also found in crude oil, gasoline, cigarette smoke. 
in an industry it's used for rubbers, dyes, and pesticides. Now, I know that's a lot of functional groups, but you're going to be given a chart. And all you need to do is recognize the functional group on organic molecules. So if you haven't gotten your chart already, see if you can find it maybe from your uh, teacher or on your periodic table, because we're going to use it with our practice. Let's take a look at this organic molecule. This is aspartame. It has many functional groups. How many functional groups can you spot? See if you can pause the video right now and use your functional group chart to spot as many functional groups as you can. All right, did you spot any functional groups? Well, let me show you the ones that I see. Starting on the very left-hand side, this is carboxylic acid. Its carbonyl group has a carbon-oxygen double bond, and then there's a side jaunt over here where hydroxide is. Another functional group is an amine. This is a nitrogen attached to a hydrogen, and the rest of the molecule is up here. Now this next one kind of looks like an amine, but this is one we didn't discuss and is not part of your group. This little side one right here is called an amide, and it's another functional group not on our list. We did not cover all of the functional groups that exist, just many of them. Up here, you might instantly recognize this aromatic ring. This is phenyl right here. And then the last one on the bottom right is an ester. This is the carbon-oxygen double bond, and then there's an oxygen with a, another R group right over here with a CH3. All right, that's the end of our notes. It's a good time to take a moment to review, highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize by answering the essential question. Good luck.